Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we have another glorious battle for our 12 battles of Christmas. And this one is an absolute corker. We are here again in Napoleon Total War Online. And this is a battle that has been submitted by Karl von Clausewitz, playing as the Ottomans on the Pyramids map. And all these players, guys, I've looked at the player list all of them are fantastic players, so you're going to see very higher level maneuvers today, guys. Watch the pros at work. And this one's called Pyramid Masterpiece, so you can expect some very, very good play over here. But first things first, let's go through the army compositions. We'll go through uh, the Ottomans and the Prussians first in the coalition against the French, and then we'll go with the French together. So if you want to skip the army compositions, guys, the chapters are down below, so you can go straight to the battle, because they do take a little while in Napoleon, but we are going to go through them nonetheless. So, Karl's Ottoman army up here starts with 10 of the nizam e Kedidit infantry. Um, standard line infantry for the Ottomans, not that strong compared to the European line infantry, but they're very cheap, so you can just get a lot of them. No light infantry for Carl, as well as, I believe, five Delhi horsemen in here. Standard melee cavalry uh, against uh, the French over here, as well as five, four mounted uh, Nizam e Kedit, the sort of chasseur a cheval of the Ottoman army. Very strong, overpowered units, those guys. Any uh, mounted rifle unit in this game is pretty overpowered, guys. And then a standard general's bodyguard. Now let's look at the Prussian army. He has four of the Prussian fusiliers, four of the uh, light infantry for the Prussians. Not rifles, just standard light infantry. He has eight of the standard musketeers for the Prussians, the standard line infantry for the Prussians, and two of the very elite foot guards over here. Very elite Prussian infantry with the awesome sort of uh, whatever that is, pom-pom on top of their uh, helms over there. As well as two of the standard lancers, if we can find them. There they are. Ready to charge the enemy. One of Lutzko's Freikorps, pretty much militia on horseback. One of the Tower, uh, yeah, Tower Seas, um, I believe. I don't know how to say that, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, but kind of, uh, I believe, Cossack kind of cavalry over there. And one of the Hussars as well, with a standard general staff bodyguard. So a lot of infantry. Um, but a lot of cavalry as well in these armies. Not so much um, light infantry and not that much elite infantry. So let's go across to the French where we are going to do the combined armies just because you can't really tell where each army starts. Uh, but we have uh, six of the standard fusiliers for the French. Uh, one of the 18th Regiment d'Enfanterie de Ligne, the Brave. These guys, the brave boys in the French line, one of the special units in the game. Four of the absolutely brutal old guard over here. One of the young guard, so not quite as brutal as the old guard, but still a very, very elite unit. Three of the Swiss foot, as well as three of the Polish legion. So a very multicultural force that we have going on here as well one literally just one unit of light infantry sixth regiment d'enfanterie legere uh, and one militia over here as well and then the cavalry is a bit of a mix so we have three chasseurs a cheval one guard chasseur a cheval as you can see looking absolutely stunning over here uh, and then we have some Six of these Lancers, guys. They actually look fantastic as well. I love those helmets that they wear there. Uh, six of the Chevaux Leger Lancers. And one of the Guard Chevaux Leger Lancers. Oh, oh well, sort of the uh, special unit of uh, the Lancers there. The 7th Regiment of Lancers. Very good indeed. Very cool. And without further ado, guys, let's get this battle started. I can, you can see instantly 
that the Prussians and the Ottomans are very much going for this hill. Normally a massive hill of contention in this battle. And notice there's no artillery, so I believe that was a rule when the battle started. And as you can see, the French forces are pushing out right, looking to see whether they can take uh, the right flank here. But it's not really going to matter too much as... Ah, sorry, we did have some hidden uh, light infantry over here, some voltigeurs and some voltigeurs over there. But that is it. So not that much light infantry, really, with these guys. Uh, but you can see the cavalry just taking the hill over here. The Ottomans forcing, uh, forcing them to kind of think about what they're doing. But it looks like the French are turning to the right flank and going hard after the right flank. And I don't know whether this is a bit of a sort of a fake, fake maneuver, if that makes sense. But you can see that Karl is pushing up his Ottoman infantry. The French cavalry is really rampant on this left flank. And you can see the Prussian player is started off right and now pushing far left. Probably to try and disrupt the movement of that cavalry so that it can't come all the way around and just harry the back of their armies. But you can see fighting is about to ensue on the slopes of the hill over here. Very, very awesome battle so far. This is so cool. Lots of maneuvers. Uh, and you can tell these guys are very, very good. Just by looking at the micro. If you, you can tell a really decent Napoleon player based on the micro rather than uh, anything else. And he's going to run his Hussars in. Kind of a throwaway unit into some of those uh, Chasseurs et Cheval. Just to try and uh, scare them off. And you can see they have ran away. But now the uh, line infantry is going to start firing. And he really doesn't want his cavalry to be in the line of fire. Come on, boys. Fire. Why are they not firing? Maybe they've been turned off. I don't know. But they have just shredded through one of those chasseur units. As you can see. As more musket balls keep coming into them. And here comes... Uh, the Ottoman cavalry, but you can see the French lines have pushed up in the middle there. They're a bit separated, which is slightly weird to see from uh, some highly advanced players that they are so separated between this sort of uh, block and this block. Um, but it might just be uh, one of the players really microing their cavalry and, and not doing much with the infantry for the time being. But you can see the French cavalry has been pushed back slightly. Uh, not quite sure what it's what it's going to do, uh, but the um, Prussian infantry is coming forward to try and push into them. And we can see the Prussian Fusiliers trading shots with the Voltigeurs over here. And the Prussian Fusiliers, even though the Voltigeurs might be more elite, they just don't have enough men uh, in their unit. I'd never really tend to take Voltigeurs just because they're only 60 and they don't even have rifles. So you don't really have an advantage with them when you've got a, uh, a light infantry unit that has 90 uh, but you can see fighting starting to ensue all across the lines as uh, uh, Carl has these infantry that are pretty much facing off no one. So very likely he's going to bring them around here to flank. But you can see fire uh, shots going off across the whole map. Look at that. Sight to see across the pyramids. But brutal fighting going on right now. You can see the Ottoman cavalry. Here they come. They're coming into the French light infantry. And they are going to form square, but they are the mounted cavalry. And we're going to see how Carl likes to use his mounted cavalry here in a fantastic way. Uh, so much better than I can use them. Uh, but they're going to get their volleys off into those squares. It is a really, really powerful way of disrupting the squares. And as you can see, fighting and chewing through the houses here on the banks of uh, this sort of village town thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I can't quite remember its name from the actual Battle of the Pyramids. Um, but yeah. And you can see the uh, Guard Chasseur à Cheval. And the uh, the rest of the French cavalry really just hanging out. They, they, they can't mount a frontal assault. They can't do too much. So uh, they're going to have to try and retreat. And that really just opens the door for Prussia on this left flank. To come round the flank and start hitting them in the side because they're very compact in the middle here as you can see um, as Carl waits for his right moment to go flanking around that side 
So the mounted, uh, so the Nizam Keda infantry trading shots with uh, the 6th Regiment d'Enfantry Legere. Going to take some shots at them. These guys have not even fired a shot in anger yet. They are just waiting. And as you can see, that's a good decision to leave them off fire at will. Because if they were on fire at will right now, all they would be doing is just firing into the side of the hill. That is a very important thing with this map, guys. If you're ever playing on pyramids, you can see so many dips and bumps. And you can maneuver troops really nicely through them or really terribly depending on what is happening. For example, if you moved your line up and just put a, a standard line and you put some of them like down here and you put them on fire at will, they're just going to be firing into a hill. So what you want to do is take them off fire at will, run them up onto the top of the hill and hopefully the enemy won't have uh, microed quite as well as you and then fire into the enemy when they've got that nice position. You can see lots of maneuvering going on here and that's what I love, absolutely love about Napoleon is sort of the uh, the pace of the online battles like you can maneuver you can uh, you can re-engage you can disengage sorry you can disengage then re-engage you can come back you can go forward you, there's a lot of options and it's a lot slower uh, if you want it to be than some of the other online battles where pretty much as soon as the first engagement happens then you are uh, you are stuck in it forever and it's either a win or lose here in Napoleon you can engage and disengage and start uh, multiple times and really battles do fade and go uh, go for you and go against you a lot over the course of a battle unless you absolutely dominate one so we can see we're still playing with the maneuvering over here with the Prussian infantry uh, and he does have some of his foot guards in this line the elite boys ready to fight as the French bring forward some of their fusiliers of the line you can see a bit of a fat formation over here with the light infantry, but likely just to ward off against this cavalry. And you can see the cavalry charge has gone for it. But here come the hussars, the glorious Prussian hussars pushing through the center, forcing the fusiliers into square. And that is going to be really, really effective for the Prussians here as they're going to just get free volleys into that square. Very compact formation to fire at. And as you can see on the right flank, it's just a bit of a stalemate up at the house. But the 6th Regiment Infantry Legere is just taking so much more damage than the Nizam Keda Infantry uh, due to the volleys. And there comes, here comes the Prussians pushing forward. They've pushed back the first French line and they are going to keep pushing into that French uh, line over there. But you can see he's coming back with more cavalry once again to charge into these Prussian Fusiliers because they can't form square. They are going to run, <clears throat> excuse me, and they are going to take a lot of damage. Look at that, getting fired at, nearly down to uh, half men over there. And the Prussians really have not had that much damage. You can see most of these units over here pretty much undamaged. So too are the French units over here, but the old guard waiting in the way. And that is very scary for the Prussians. Look at the volleys going into the backs of these fusiliers as they retreat. Getting absolutely shredded there uh, as they try and retreat. But yeah, the Prussians still do have this advantage on the left flank where they, they are overlapping by quite a bit. And we do see the Prussians form square there. I'm not too sure why, but you can see, look up on the minimap up here, the formation that has happened. They are getting enveloped, the French, and there's not really that much they can do about it. Because they don't have too much to spare anymore. And that's why he's bringing over these fusiliers. Most likely to try and spread uh, their, their lines a little bit more. So they're less encapsulated here. And that means pretty much if you're in this formation. You know that you are going to lose. Because <laughs> uh, you are basically surrounded on all sides. And the enemy can put more firepower down than you can. Because you're surrounded on all sides and getting flanked. And look at that poor Chevrolet Leger Lancer getting absolutely shredded. And we can see these troops eventually starting to fire up in the town. The old guard, though, going for some shots there. Very, very strong boys over here. And they have four of them. So that is a scary, scary proposition for Carl and his ally to really do something about. And you can see the French cavalry now is pretty damaged. We have a lot of damage on the French cavalry. The Ottoman cavalry, on the other hand, there's only uh, five units of this cavalry over this side. 
So, a bit of damage for both sets of cavalry here. You can see the Ottomans over here, the Delhi horsemen, still in decent nick, uh, most of them. Uh, and, yeah, the French do still have some good cavalry over here as well. So, the cavalry engagements have been kind of uh, skirmishes. No one's really taken the cavalry advantage yet. Uh, but the infantry advantage is definitely going in the way of the Prussian and Ottomans here as they start to envelop the French forces at the pyramids. Here they come. Polish legion. And you can just see the micro on these guys is, is crazy, really. Getting these guys forward, backwards, uh, in different lines, all that stuff. As we see the trading of blows with the foot guards. Look at that. Beautiful sight to see there. Glorious. Let's get that as a screenshot. You're going to hear the familiar sound of the screenshot going off. Oh, that is glorious to see. Look at that. Beautiful shots there. Here comes the Freikorps, the militia. And they just managed to get square in time. But is it going to be enough? The uh, Regiment of the Brave. Oh, and he goes straight for Marshal Sult. Marshal Sult is going to be retreating there. He's gone straight for him. And that has scared the French general there. Marshal Sult. One of the very famous French marshals from the Napoleonic era. Famous for being defeated at... Uh, in the Peninsula War at... Oh, go on, I can't remember. Uh, oh, the first battle when they got off the ships. He marched through the trees. And uh, yeah, they... Uh, as long as I'm right. Someone comment down below whether I'm right. But he marched through the trees and got the jump on the British army that had landed in Portugal. And yeah, uh, fortunately they had uh, a secret weapon which was the Duke of Wellington who was a very, very good general. Um, not quite Napoleon, but a decent general nonetheless. Uh, here come the, uh, the Prussians are just really, really pushing hard in this center. You can see how hard they're pushing. Lots of these units taking a lot of damage down here because of this hard press that they're going for. And a lot of uh, a lot of fighting has happened along this center. But you can see the trap is just slowly, slowly closing in. And the more they start to envelop, the more troops they have to drag away from the center to, uh, to take these left hand, uh, sorry, right hand from their perspective flanks and make sure they're secure. So uh, yeah, it's really just about extending them around until the center itself crumbles, which is why the Prussian, uh, the Prussian player is pushing so hard in that center just to destroy uh, the troops here so that when the time is right, this left flank can just crush it, crush that left flank uh, there, which looks very likely to do because he's got more troops. He's got about, well, no, actually, he's got about equal. Four on... Yeah, it's, it's about equal. Uh, but these are just standard fusiliers as well. And these are just standard musketeers. So not too many elite troops left. And that is only a militia. That is not going to be able to hold the line for too long. As more fire keeps coming out onto the Polish legion over here. And the French are going to retreat once again. Just constantly being pushed back in the center here. And you can see Carl. Carl is just like kind of... Uh, Wow, was that a voice break? Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, he's just kind of waiting uh, for the right moment. Really not engaging too much as the Prussian player really extends his own lines and extends the French uh, lines. But you can see most of his troops have not taken much damage yet. These guys obviously have. Uh, but a lot of these guys over on the right flank are pretty healthy. And he's still got a really large contingent of horsemen. Um, so he knows when the time is right, he can uh, bring a hammer blow down on this French flank and really destroy it uh, when the time is right. But first of all, you can see the Prussian player really need, needs to engage this infantry. And this French center is ragged and destroyed. 45 men in this Fusiliers, 32 over here. Some of the old guard have been forced into the fight early. So the elite troops are in the fight early. But they are still very scary. These uh, old guard and this young guard could really hold off a lot of Prussian troops. Uh, but he does have his foot guards ready to fight them. 
But here comes, here comes the hammer blow. The potential hammer blow on the right flank by Carl here. Pushing forward with his men. Come on, men. Fire. And he's double stacked this line, you can see. Double stack the line so that they're both firing. And they're both pretty much in exactly the same situation. So they won't fire into the back of each other. And here comes the cavalry, the Ottoman cavalry, going for a charge on the Polish legion. Just pushing through them. Don't even care. Just going for it. Everyone charging down the hill. Routing the 6th Regiment d'Enfantry Légère. And you can see the Cheveux Légère Lancers are going to have to come and try and bring an answer to this charge of the Delhi Horsemen. Uh, but yeah... Really just about disrupting the lines as the Prussians move up. Well-coordinated attack there from the uh, two armies. And I, and I can tell you from experience, it's not easy to coordinate attacks like that in Napoleon uh, with, when you're with uh, someone else. Especially if you're not talking, like on Discord, if you're trying to use Messenger. That is, uh, that is really, really difficult. Uh, but here come the Nizam Kader infantry. Uh, and he's not moved his right flank all the way around yet, but going for a big push in the middle. And you can see it's kind of split them even more and kind of buckled this line here. And he's going to have to bring his old guard and young guard back to the front lines. And that's what I mean about disengaging and re-engaging and all that sort of thing when it comes to Napoleon. But here comes the Nizam Kader infantry once again as the uh, Delhi horsemen are just running rampant through the forces uh, of the French over here. Just going crazy, going berserk almost um, down here. And he's spread his new Nizam Kader infantry out again. And you can see the French are pretty much at a right angle here. Look at the Prussians go though. Look how close they're getting to the lines. This is going to be an absolutely brutal volley straight into the French here. Come on, boys. Get your volley off. A lot of them needing to reload still, but this is this is brutal range right here. Straight, seeing the whites in the enemy's eyes. That is pretty much what they used to say to the troops before they fired. Make sure you don't fire until you see the whites in the enemy's eyes because of how inaccurate those brown best muskets were. Actually, I don't know. I I can't quite remember the Prussian what muskets the Prussians used. Uh but yeah, every single musket, no matter which musket it was, was hugely inaccurate and had the biggest kick uh, on it that you could imagine. Everyone's shoulders would be completely destroyed after a battle, anyone that survived. Um, the craziness of a Napoleonic uh, total, uh, Napoleon, uh, Napoleonic battle, if I can speak. Uh, but you can see this, this has been in the making for so long, uh, this, uh, this push. And you can see... Just simultaneously, all at once, seemingly from nothing, uh, the French lines have just crumbled. Absolutely crumbled. And that has been something that they have worked together for so long. Um, pushing slowly, uh, probing in the center, tying troops into the center while extending around the left flank. You can see how everything has worked together to bring... Such a, such a huge result all at once as the French lines are just crumbling and the Ottoman cavalry are running through the enemies over here. The guard chasseur à cheval. Oh, look at this. Prussians are just in full flight going, uh, sorry, full uh, charge going after the routing enemies here. Don't want to take any prisoners after they took such brutal damage in the center to achieve such a result. Um, but you can see the old guard still holding firm. The last of the old guard uh, holding firm in the center here. But look at this. The Prussians are just going to put the power down. Look at that. That is a beautiful screenshot. Um, but the Prussians are just going to put the hammer down with these volleys here. Charging. And the Lancers are going to charge Marshal Salt again. And Marshal Salt has died. He has died. Oh, that is unfortunate. Um, unfortunate over there. You can see the Chevrolet Leger Lancers going into the Nizam Kadet for the last time. Not really able to do much as the mounted Nizam Kadet just take pot shots at the enemy. And that was indeed a masterpiece. A really, really, really well worked between the team masterpiece. And uh, yeah. So they managed to take the hill. Uh, kind of a stalemate on the hill. 
while the Prussian player really extended his line around to the left, forcing the French to answer that with more troops and more cavalry while he pressed in the centre to weaken it. And then when the time was right, they both struck around the side. What a fantastic, fantastic battle. And you can see that 827 loss, 700 losses for the other players. 1,200, 1,300, and all really good players there. Killed uh, 1,000 for Carl, 1,400 for the Prussian player, um, and then 700 and 500 for the other French players as well. But let's have a look at some of the kills here. The Cader Infantry doing fantastically. Look at that. Showing its worth once again because it's a really cheap unit. Uh, and you can get a lot of them in an Ottoman army there. 70 for the Mounted Knees, I'm Kadit. But yeah, some really good stats there. Some of them not so not so good, but they will have been the throwaway units that were charged into the fight. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. What a fantastic battle uh, to showcase here on the channel. So thank you very much to Carl for this battle. And it was definitely a pyramid masterpiece. Very good indeed. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Merry Christmas if you uh, celebrate Christmas. If you don't, please have a great December. And thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.